Microsoft just unveiled Windows 365. If you're confused, that's okay. A few short weeks ago, Microsoft announced Windows 11, the desktop operating system that is the follow-on to Windows 10. And now Microsoft is back today and they're announcing Windows 365. And if you're confused, well, I totally get why, and that is why we are here today. So first off, what exactly is Windows 365? It is a new quote unquote service from Microsoft that streams Windows from the cloud. Microsoft is pushing this as a Windows desktop available anywhere running in the cloud. If you're familiar with VDI or virtual desktop infrastructure, this product falls right in line in that category. What Microsoft is gonna allow you to do is to sign up for a service, either pick a couple different tier options, and then you are able to run a desktop in a cloud based on the configurations that you chose. And the primary configurations are either how much hardware to use or the license, either business or enterprise. Now, if you just picked up what I just said there, business or enterprise, you notice there's no consumer. So this is for now only a business offering. And what it allows you to do is to create a desktop in the cloud and be able to access it from anywhere on any type of device. Yes, any type of a device, things like iPads, Chromebooks, or anything else will be able to log into a desktop infrastructure in the cloud and stream it locally. Now, what this will allow you to do is to run Windows in the browser natively, quote unquote, natively in the browser, if you will. And so you can get work done on any type of a device. Microsoft is offering this as a subscription. Basically, you pay monthly and then you can ask access the desktop in the cloud and everything is right where you left it. So that the benefits here are pretty significant for certain types of customers, right? If you're a business and a user has a low end device and they need more performance, what you can do is provision them a desktop in the cloud and then they can access it through the device and all the data is stored in the cloud. It's much more secure and Microsoft owns the data and content holistically so you don't have to worry about updating Windows or anything else like that. And I want to clarify that Microsoft does not own the data you create, just the infrastructure that it's running on so you don't have to worry so much about security threats because all you're worrying about is the authentication to that uh, specific device. Now, let's take a look here. What does it look like? Well, it looks like Windows running in a browser. Now, this is Windows 10 running in the browser here, streaming from the cloud, a cloud desktop, if you will, as Microsoft likes to call it. And it looks just like a Windows device. And now it streams at a really high rate. Basically, it's going to depend on your connection. But as long as you have a decent internet connection, everything should work fairly seamlessly. And actually, one of the benefits of running a desktop like this is that let's say you are on a low internet connection well your your desktop experience based on your interactions with the data are based on the connection microsoft has at the data center which is way faster than you're ever going to get at home so in theory even if you have a low connectivity in the cloud using your desktop you can download big applications or data to it and not have to worry about your your bandwidth connectivity but realistically this is just windows running in a browser and it's a service that is the primary difference here windows 11 is a desktop os something you would install on on actual hardware. Windows 365 is something you stream. It's something you pay for on a monthly basis. So what you could do in theory is if you need a higher end desktop, you can go buy a Chromebook, if you will, and then license a desktop from Microsoft in the cloud on a monthly basis. Now, this is not gonna be designed for gaming. This is gonna be designed for productivity applications. As you can see here, Microsoft is using Power BI and other apps like that are gonna work really well and you're able to stream all your line of business applications to the local device. This is gonna be a pretty big deal for enterprise and business customers who have significant shifts in user bases, meaning maybe they have during the holiday season, they have uh, need to onboard a bunch of people and they don't want to buy high end devices. So they give them a lower end device, but give them a virtual desktop in the cloud through micro through windows 365, almost said Microsoft 365. And then they get the high performance that they need without the overhead purchase that is initially required. If you were going to buy a high end laptop or something like that for people who need a lot of endpoints and we need to manage all these things, it's going to, all integrate into Microsoft Endpoint Manager, no surprise there. And that's really about all you need to know. I mean, those are the big sort of highlights is that it runs in the cloud. You can either use it as a Windows business user or Windows Enterprise. The basic rule here is if you're using business in the in your operation right now, you're going to need a business view. If you're using enterprise licensing, you're going to need an enterprise licensing. And then Microsoft manages everything else. In a couple clicks, you can have it up and running and it completely integrates into your Microsoft 365 uh, ecosystem. And that's how Windows 365 is going to fit into it. It's always updated, always secure, and Microsoft manages everything. All you do is manage the user credentials and basically you can set up different um, token challenges and things like that. So you just, you just manage that authentication uh, challenge, set it up, 
get it on, and then it's just up and running. So that is Windows 365 in a nutshell. Now, availability is actually coming really quickly here, August 2nd. So we don't have to wait too long to actually make this, you know, be generally available. Microsoft has been working on this for a long time. We've heard it referred to as Cloud PC previously. So if you're thinking, how is Microsoft launching this so quick? Because anybody who hangs around Microsoft's ecosystem long enough, they, they love to put things in preview, and then they just kind of, you know, float about the ecosystem for a while. But this one is coming uh, August 2nd. Now, pricing isn't quite known because, again, anybody who hangs around the world of Microsoft, especially in the enterprise space, knows there's the price that you see sometimes on the website. But if you're buying a bunch of these things or if you're a big customer, you're going to get discounts because it can rack up pretty quick for small businesses. But I believe that this is primarily targeted at larger enterprises. So Windows 365, I... I totally get where Microsoft is going. Um, there's some challenges here that I think are going to be a little bit interesting, and I'll actually link to some things down below. For example, Joe Consumer, who doesn't quite understand what's going on, there's now Windows 10 available, there's Windows 11 now available, and Windows 365. Well, how do you choose which one? Here's the easy sort of rule. If you are if you're a consumer, first of all, and you're running an Intel device that is 7th gen or older, meaning 654 or whatever, um, you're going to be on Windows 10. If it's 7th gen or or I should say 8th gen or later, but we don't fully know that yet, you're going to be wanting to run Windows 11. If you are an enterprise customer or a business customer and you want to be running a desktop in the cloud, that is Windows 365. Keep in mind that Windows 365, confusingly enough, is made up of Windows 10 or Windows 11 when it becomes generally available later this year. You'll have options of streaming either one. I suspect most people will be running Windows 10 through Windows 365 because that is what most enterprise operations are running. I can't imagine most companies are going to you know, roll over to Windows 11 immediately unless they're trying to prove that they're on the bleeding edge. So there you go. That is the easier way to break it down. Yes, it's going to be a little bit confusing, primarily just because Microsoft only announced Windows 11 just a, a few weeks ago. And to put these things back to back, it can, it can create a little thing. I personally am somewhat interested to see the corporate adoption of this because the, Microsoft is not... It's not forging any new territory or forging any steel out of this. Services like this have existed previously, but they've not been as well integrated into the Microsoft 365 solutions portfolio. Microsoft is looking to upsell its existing customers and saying, hey, if you're already using M365 and you need VDI, we have the perfect solution. It's just a couple clicks. It's up and running. It's on a per user per month basis, not a per consumption model like Azure virtual desktops were. So it's a little bit easier to digest at the end of the day. But the reality is, is that Microsoft loves to nickel and dime everybody and make those licensing fees really hard and convoluted to understand. That being said, I think Windows 365 will eventually be, you know, be a thing. I think that people are going to eventually adopt it. The question becomes, does it ever come into a consumer service? Not quite sure if we ever see that. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business tool. And right now... I don't think consumers are, are going to be too interested in that. We're still used to our devices. I mean, let's be honest. Microsoft effectively isn't reinventing the thin client here, but they're adding their own touch and flavor to a, a thin client experience called Windows 365. So there you go, folks. Uh, I'll have some more videos here coming up soon about updates on Windows and everything else going on. So make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.